Good evening and welcome to Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Iron Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Goel PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and Meridian Port Services, MPS. The show is proudly powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA. Our media partner on this journey of a lifetime is the Business and Financial Times, the BNFT. Now, if you want to have a grasp of all that transpired on the show tonight, make a date and grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT, and you'll be able to see all that happened here on the show tonight. We shall be getting interactive with you. And so all you have to do is to send us your messages and comments via our dedicated WhatsApp line, which is 0559 That appropriate, and we shall share that with the rest of the world. We shall also be activating the phone lines along the line for you to call in and contribute to the discussion. We are streaming live on our social media pages on Facebook. We are streaming live at Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, Port of Tema is where we are live at. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at Ion Port. My name is Kennedy Mona. We're going for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the show. Please stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes, our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry. 
uh, in the course of the week. And indeed, in the course of the week, Ghana played host to the rest of the international community when she hosted the first international green shipping conference, the first ever on the continent of Africa. Let's take a look at this and other stories. The first international green shipping conference in Africa has been held in Ghana for Africa's maritime stakeholders to discuss how to take advantage of opportunities to become part of the global green transition of the shipping sector. The conference, which saw the participation of the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Kitak Lim, brought together thought leaders, experts, and think tanks whose ideas and perspectives will lay the foundation for Africa's gradual transition from fossil fuels to green fuel in maritime transport. The conference was under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization and the Danish Maritime Authority, with the Ghana Maritime Authority as the host organization. Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Ketak Lim, revealed that this year, the IMO is seeking to introduce an upgraded strategy on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from ships, which is expected to set the framework for the way forward in support of decarbonizing shipping. The revised strategy containing a basket of technical and economic measures will provide the necessary certainty for all stakeholders to invest in future fuels and the ship-related technologies. And it will be the necessary catalyst to unlock new opportunities for African countries particularly in renewable fuel production, but also from retrofitting ships and the digitalizing port operation. He said the IMO will support member states, including developing countries, implement measures to ensure that no one is left behind in the green agenda. I know that decarbonization presents challenges for many developing countries. At IMO, we are committed to examining and addressing the impact of the major we adapt to achieve this end. With this in mind, we are also committed to supporting member states to unlock the potential that green shipping presents. I'm confident that African countries stand in a prime position to unlock this potential. Ghana's Minister for Transport, Kweku Furesiyama, said, while Ghana's government embraces the green agenda, there is the need for developing states to be considered. Developing countries remain challenged with a lack of green transportation infrastructure, which would have ensured a sustainable future for us all. It is imperative, therefore, that the impact of measures on states, including developing countries, and in particular those classified as least developed countries and small island developing countries, should be considered. They should never be left behind. The Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Thomas Kofi Alonsi, encouraged African states to open themselves up to unlocking potentials in renewable energy. As the maritime industry forges ahead in its quest to attain a zero carbon society, with the need for cleaner fuels and its associated technologies would also increase significantly and urgently. Africa, however, has the potential to be a major ship energy source as the continent has vast and untapped renewable resources that position us to benefit from the green transition and maritime decarbonization. Speaking on the sidelines of the conference, Danish ambassador to Ghana, Tom Norin, acknowledged the fruitful collaborations that have existed between Denmark and Ghana in promoting sustainable shipping. We've had almost a decade on uh, a very, very close cooperation focusing on, on a number of issues uh, from uh, training, for instance, truck cat uh, pilots and, and, and such, training them for the, uh, for, for the, the huge tanker, uh, the, the huge container ships that are coming to port and all these things. This, this is in the past. But of course, we all recognize that uh, climate change and the consequences of climate change have a huge impact on our lives and action is needed. Industry experts in Ghana during the week 
gathered in Accra for a business seminar that sought to deliberate on pertinent development in the Ghanaian economy and their impact and mitigating factors for German Ghanaian businesses. Organized by the Delegation of German Industry and Commerce in Ghana, also known as AHK Ghana, the seminar dubbed Ghana's Economic Outlook for 2023 sought to enlighten individuals and businesses about the outlook of the economy and how businesses can hedge against the current economic challenges Ghana is facing. Subjects for discussion included the new VAT Amendment Act, the reversal of the discount on benchmark values and the government debt restructuring program. I mean, basically, why did the government reverse the discount on Yes, the with the reversal, I think it was one against WTOs. That is not acceptable. That it distorts the market. So if you look at the, somebody buys a, a particular item, comes to, into the country, and then we didn't sell it. So why do you give discount in the first place? So. Uh, initially, they decided that it was going to level the playing field. Okay. Uh, let's say A buys a particular commodity from a particular source, based on maybe the his commercial level. He buys at a certain price, and then B also buys at a different commercial level. He buys the same item, and the price is different. It's not wrong. In WTO terms, and the rules we apply, it's not wrong. Okay. But for us to sit down and say that we are going to just slash, apply a particular value, and then make it equal to the two, which was wrong, because distorting the market, that's the first place. Secondly, we lost a lot of revenue. For the, for the years that we applied the discount, according to us, we lost our three billions. So I will tell you, what do we do? Do we guess put the pressure on business community? Then what do business people do? We diverted the carbon because they were not accepting transactional values. Carbon were not going to Abukos and Togo and find its way to the market, denying the state they needed transition. And we did our whole analysis. We were importing over 6,000 different products into this country. The one that we thought we had some local capacity and competitive enough to grow was about 48. So you just needed so the reverse of that on 48. That's, that was our argument. That the rest, the government feels that revenue is not an issue and they reduce it for all those products. We don't have a problem. Is that what the government did for you? Well, in the reverse, right? they reverse everything. A delegate for the delegation of German industry and commerce in Ghana, Baghdad Hellman, said Ghana's competitive advantage for foreign businesses is waning with time. From a German point of view, and when I asked my team at the end of January about German companies' interest into Ghana in the beginning of this year, someone told me Ivory Coast and Senegal are picking up. So Ghana is not anymore the only country in Western Africa for German companies to look into. The Center for Maritime Law and Security Africa, working with the Center for Coastal Management of the University of Cape Coast has launched a promoting local capacity to address the destabilizing impact of foreign distant vessels project. The project, funded by the U.S. State Department and coordinated by the U.S. Embassy in Ghana, is being implemented in seven countries, namely Benin, Cameroon, Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Senegal, and Mauritania. Ahead of the project implementation, stakeholders in the fisheries governance space, including government officials, industry, non-governmental organizations, academia, and media have participated in a webinar to discuss the action plan of the project. The team lead at SEMLOS Africa, Dr. Kamau Dean Ali, explained that this project seems to bring to light the negative effects of foreign distance vessels activities on the fishery sector and work with key stakeholders, especially governments, to mitigate them. The language or the message is not that it is entirely negative, but we must address the negative impact of it. What are some of these negative impact? The foreign distant fishing vessels are in a space where also we have our coastal communities that are also fishing. So the fishery resource is also important for the livelihood of our coastal communities and the economic activity across the sub-region. 
So you must seek to balance the interests of the distant water fishing vessels as well as that of the local communities. The second thing is that you have to at every time balance the economic returns that you get from that as well as what they also get. It is an investment. Are we getting enough from it? The argument may be that we are either getting inadequate, but the argument also will be that we are perhaps even reaping too more, too much. Industry, however, also argues that other governance and technical issues pose dire implications on the fishery sector, thus also needing equal attention. When it comes to manning the vessel, you need certain expertise. And currently, locally, we don't have it. So you see the top echelon of the queue coming from China. We see an opportunity because one of the objectives of this project is to look at ownership and then look at investment. So we want to leverage or explore this project, whether this project is able to bring in other investors so that we will have competition. Not just that, we need to also build our financial capacity. The, the banking sector in Ghana has no clue what happens in the fishing industry. So it's so difficult for, for us to have any discussion, and especially with the kind of interest rate they charge. You cannot just go to the banks and get loans to go into the fishing industry. They, they consider that a very high risk area. Probably one of the things we need to do is to start engaging with the banks. Probably government would, in this budget would need to start putting aside something to support locals to at least be able to acquire their own vessels. So those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. It's now time for us to take the word of the day. And the word of the day is bare boat charter. Bare, bare boat charter. Bare boat charter is an arrangement for the chartering or hiring of a vessel whereby no crew or provisions are included as part of the agreement. The charterer provides crew bankers and pays all operational costs. We're not zooming into our discussion proper tonight. Uh, tonight we're taking a look at green shipping. Uh, we're taking a look at it from the African perspective. And with us to do the discussion uh, tonight is Mr. Bwachi Buampong. Uh, Mr. Bwachi Buampong is the director in charge of maritime services at the Ghana Maritime Authority, GMA. Uh, let me say good evening to you, sir, and welcome to Iron Port. Good evening, Kennedy, and thank you for having me. Good evening to your viewers. Absolutely. Uh, is this your first time on the show? Yes, this is my first time well, happy on New your Year, show. <laughs> Many happy returns. <laughs> welcome you to the family. All right, so um, also to join us will be um, Jacob uh, Hogarth, who is Director in Charge of Climate and Green Transition at the Danish Maritime Authority. He's uh, joined us already on Zoom. Uh, good evening, um, Jacob. Good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'll start with you, Nana uh, Bwachi Buampong. And uh, uh, in simple terms, when we say green shipping, what exactly do we mean? Okay, so simply green shipping is the term used to describe um, the carriage of goods and services by shipping in a sustainable uh, manner. As you are aware, shipping is really the only cost-effective way of transporting any large amount of goods over any great um, distance. Mm. Increasingly, there have been discussions on uh, the effects of shipping on the climate. Shipping mm. contributes to about 3% of uh, climate emissions. And so uh, green shipping seeks to reduce the 3% over uh, a certain period of time. So in simple terms, green shipping can be termed as doing the uh, business of shipping in a more sustainable and environmentally friendly manner. Mm. All right. So um, I think in recent times, there's, uh, there are calls for Africa to join you know, the global green shipping agenda. Why do you think this has become so imperative? 
Okay, so um, the calls for Africa to join the global green shipping agenda has been there for a while, as you have rightly um, alluded to. Mm. Um, at the IMO currently, there are discussions on the adoption. Uh, in fact, a, a program was adopted in 2018 known mm. as the IMO's Initial Greenhouse uh, Strategy. And right. in the strategy, it seeks to um, reduce emissions from uh, ships by 50% in the year 2050 mm. and to net it off uh, to 0% uh, at the turn of the century. Mm. Africa, as you know, con uh, enjoys a great amount uh, of shipping. And so we would need to join uh, the band wagon because mm. take it or leave it, whatever decisions that are taken at uh, the global stage would mm. have uh, an impact on the way we do business. And mm. so it is imperative that during the discussions, mm. Africa also goes to table and negotiates and also gets a, a good deal for uh, itself. Talking about the IMO greenhouse strategy that was uh, adopted in 2018. Yes. This year, at, during this, year, this year's meeting, there is a review. Mm. It is due for review and the next couple of months is very crucial for mm. the reviews in that strategy. And so it is imperative that African countries go to the IMO with a common voice and also put on the table the impacts that these things are going to uh, have on the way we do shipping business. And that is why it is uh, important. And that was one of the main uh, uh, things that uh, we took into consideration into convening the Green Shipping Conference okay. that just happened uh, last week. It is just to uh, bring to the fore the importance for Africa to go to table and also present uh, their issues for it to be factored into the review of the uh, IMO's initial greenhouse gas strategy. Mm. All right, well, I'll come back. I'll, take, I'll, I'll have your take on what your impression about the conference is. That's the first in Africa, the International Green, uh, green Shipping uh, Conference uh, held here in Accra a couple of days ago. But let me go to uh, Jacob and find out from you. Uh, Jake, we cannot talk about green shipping in the world or globally uh, without mentioning the uh, Danish Maritime Authority and Denmark in particular. Uh, why is that? You seem to be a leader in, in championing this particular uh, course of green shipping. Thank you. Yes, we, we are. But first, a few words on our role as a green front runner in, in general. So Denmark decided to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in 2030 uh, by 70% compared to the level of in 1990. And we've also decided to become a climate neutral society by 2045 at latest, taking into account the Paris Agreement on limiting the global, uh, climate, uh, global temperature to 1.5 degrees. We believe that the climate challenges are global. Therefore, Denmark must be a leading nation uh, also on the international climate efforts. We have to inspire and influence the rest of the world. Furthermore, we believe that Denmark has a historical and moral responsibility to, it, to take lead. So, talking about shipping, Denmark has one of the largest commercial fleets measured by operated tonnage, and Denmark is home to the second largest container company in the world. So therefore, we believe that we must be a, a leader also in green shipping. Mm. We must be able to influence the global goals uh, and, and make sure that we accelerate green shipping. Mm. All right, that's awesome. Uh, let me, can you tell us about the zero emission, uh, you know, uh, shipping mission? Zero emission shipping mission. What is it about? Well, the zero emission shipping mission is mm. a public-private partnership mm. which was created by Denmark in 2021. Other co-leads include uh, the U.S., Norway, the Merck mckilly Müller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping, and the Global Maritime Forum. Mm. Uh, members include the UK, Singapore, India, South Korea, Morocco, and Ghana. So the goal of the partnership is to demonstrate that commercially, uh, that uh, zero emission shipping is commercially viable in 2030. So we need to show that it can happen and that ships can actually run on alternative fuels, that we have the required infrastructure and ports in place, and that we can actually make it work in practice. Mm. That's awesome. Um, I just want to find out from you once uh, again, uh, what some of the things that you are doing 
uh, by the Danish Maritime Authority in Denmark to ensure that your operations, as far as shipping is concerned, are as green as possible, for which reason uh, you have, you know, taken the lead to, to, to lead a charge for, you know, global, uh, you know, green shipping? Well, first of all, it's important to bear in mind that shipping is global by nature. Therefore, the rules of the game should primarily be globally and they should be regulated by the IMO. So we try to influence the IMO to be as ambitious as possible. But what can we do from a Danish perspective? Well, the Danish Maritime Authority is, is in charge of approving new vessels capable of running on zero emission fuels. So we are here to approve uh, these new designs. Even though we don't have an existing regulation in an IMO, we come up with innovative solutions uh, and try to, yeah, to influence the design for the future. So that's one way of seeing it. Another way of seeing it is uh, that we have formed public-private partnerships in Denmark on shipping. So we include all the shipping associations, the, uh, the companies capable of doing innovative designs. We have reforms with the government uh, discussions on what can be done to promote green shipping also in Denmark. So as a result of these uh, uh, public-private partnerships also in Denmark, uh, the government has come up with a national green tax reform whereby you, you tax uh, carbon emissions from not only shipping but also from other industries. Another example is subsidies for the electrification of domestic ferries. So there are things happening also domestically in, in Denmark. Okay, awesome. So I'll come back to you, but let me come into the studio and, and, and go to Nana Boache uh, Buampong and find out from you uh, what are your impression or assessment of the uh, just ended conference on green shipping in Africa uh, that's in Accra is and some of the issues that came up that you think that are worth sharing with our audience. The conference was um, a huge uh, success to begin with. We had we were able to convene about 20 countries from uh, African maritime administrations who uh, attend meetings at uh, IMO and to speak about um, the opportunities that uh, would avail uh, in terms of uh, the green shipping. What came to light was um, the fact that we all agreed that there was a regulatory uh, uncertainty, mm. as has just been alluded by uh, Jacob, yeah. Jacob from uh, Denmark, Denmark, and yeah. the fact that there is a need to have certainty mm. in the industry because it is this certainty that would drive uh, investment, investments for ship owners to know which way uh, they are going. And mm. so that was one of the main uh, takeaways. And then for Africans, we realized that, okay, we have a challenge with uh, finances, the unavailability of uh, financial resources to undertake research and development in some of these uh, new areas. Mm. Again, the lack of uh, technical and operational capacities mm. uh, in our region is mm. another thing that has been uh, identified. And uh, finally, we were also able to identify uh, the port infrastructure uh, deficiency, which invariably comes with uh, costs. And so we have been able to identify some of these uh, gaps in uh, the African region. And so we are going to look at ways of tackling some of um, these things. Mm. Thank you. Now, if you come to Ghana as a country, uh, you sit with the Maritime Authority as Director of Maritime Services. I just want to find out from you uh, what your assessment is of our performance in terms of our quest to uh, join uh, you know, this global uh, agenda for green shipping. Uh, where are we? Are, okay, we just, so are we still crawling or we are, we are somewhat? Okay, so for there. Ghana as a country, we mm. have, uh, you know, uh, our fleet. Mm. We, do, we do not have uh, uh, and, and, uh, the numbers mm. on, our, on our flags, but then we always ensure that we tie our regulations to the globally accepted levels. Mm. And so when you look at the um, sulfur cap, when mm. it came into force, the Maritime Authority issued the necessary operational uh, guidelines and our policy control officers are ensuring that when you are entering uh, Ghanaian ports, you 
burn uh, fuels that do not emit uh, sulfur excites in excess of the 0.5 yeah. uh, percent. And so although we are crawling, we are ensuring that we do not uh, open our space for anybody. Mm. Thank All right. You. Let me go to uh, Jacob. Jacob, let me find out from you. You mentioned some of the key initiatives you have taken uh, in Denmark to ensure that your shipping activities are as green as possible, for which reason you are one of the leaders championing green shipping globally. I just want to find out from you, first of all, what your perception or assessment is of Africa in our quest to join the global agenda of green shipping. And then when you are done with that, you now come and tell me uh, what are your impression about the recent conference that you attended here in Accra is. Well, I think Africa in general and Ghana in particular are moving along. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to start with some of the low-hanging fruits uh, that are obviously a good idea, a good business case. For example, investment in energy efficiency. Uh, also for fishing vessels, you could do investments on onshore power supply at the ports. You could make the ports more efficiently, more sustainable. And you're already doing that. Mm. Uh, but I believe it's a good idea to start on the, yeah, the low-hanging fruits where you can see an, a, a quick return, so to say. Mm. All right. So I just wanted to tell us, um, you mentioned some of the initiatives that you are undertaking in, in Denmark to make your shipping green. I just want to find out from you which of these initiatives can be replicated on the African continent or in Africa. I think the idea of having public-private partnerships where you can meet between business associations, government uh, ministries, authorities, and have a, a good discussion what can actually be done, what is needed. That's a good idea. Uh, I think that can be used, replicated also in, in Ghana. Because mm. uh, we need the perspective from the private sector to know which kind of legislation uh, do we need, which kind of uh, framework conditions uh, would spur investments in infrastructure, in the uh, future future of, of fuels, uh, but also in, in, in the ports. Uh, so, yeah. so again, public-private partnerships where you can have discussions on the needed framework conditions, that's a good idea, and that could be replicated in Ghana. Mm. Awesome. And so um, are you able to lay a finger or pinpoint a particular reason why Denmark is, shows, is showing so much interest in, in Africa uh, in terms of going green in shipping? Is there any well, particular generally, reason? Generally, Afro... Yes, uh, I would say that both Africa in general and Ghana in particular are important mm. to Denmark uh, right. for many reasons, both mm. historically. Um, but uh, we believe that the green transition of shipping can help unlock investments in renewable energy. Mm. Because once you know that the demand is there, you will also have more investments uh, in the production of renewable energy. Mm. Also, investments in energy efficiency, in infrastructure for zero emission fuels, these are important first steps that can not only mitigate climate change by, by reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, but they can also create new green jobs. So that's a good business case, we believe. So that's important that, that Ghana and Africa accelerate the, the green transition. It's a good idea in itself, for the climate, but also for business. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you're still sticking with us. I would come to the studio and then find out from uh, Nana Bawadi. I want to, going green is a capital intensive venture. And Africa, we don't have those resources to be able to match our global counterparts, uh, those in the developed world and all that. And I just want to find out from you whether you have an idea of what the International Maritime Organization is doing uh, to support African countries uh, to pace up uh, you know, and to be able to match up with, uh, you know, the global counterparts in terms of, you know, going green. Okay, so for the International Maritime Organization, they are basically the global rule, uh, rule setting uh, body. Mm. And whatever regulations that they come out with is based and on consensus. Uh, and so they, at discussions in IMO, the views and then the developmental stages of every country is taken into consideration. At the last uh, council, just at the last council uh, meeting in July last year, mm. a fund a fund was uh, established to assist uh, developing countries, including the LDCs and the SIDs, 
just to participate, participate in ongoing discussions uh, at IMO. That shows that IMO has the will to include and take the views of every uh, every member state, and that is a good step. Mm -hmm. Again, when you look into the uh, IMO's initial greenhouse uh, uh, gases strategy, mm -hmm. it uh, has a number of short, medium, and long-term measures. Embedded in the medium-term measures is a market-based measure, right. and this market-based measure is expected to uh, introduce a fund, and this fund uh, is envisaged to uh, make about $60 billion uh, on a yearly basis. And mm. this money, this money may be championed into uh, assistance, assistance to uh, the developing countries, particularly the LDCs and the SIDs. But what is of importance is that Africa must go to the table and table their needs mm. during the discussion stage so that in uh, coming up with a formula for disbursements, mm. Uh, our needs will be taken into consideration mm. and then uh, a chunk of this uh, money mm. would be allocated to us just to bring us up to speed with our developing uh, counterparts. And so for IMO, I believe they are taking uh, everybody along and just ensuring that we have uh, just an equitable uh, transition. Thank you. Okay, so um, is that level playing field created for Africa to be able to uh, voice its concerns and, like you rightly said, table its, its issues uh, for them to be taken on board? Yes, that level playing field has always uh, been uh, evident at the mm. IMO. As I indicated earlier, every decision of IMO is based on uh, consensus. So mm. if uh, instruments are being discussed, in the end, whatever you table, Africa has 54 54 countries, mm. the voice of 54 countries cannot be taken for naught. Mm. And that is uh, the only way we can uh, ensure that our concerns are taken into consideration. We should bear in mind that whatever decision that is taken mm. would uh, impact us. Mm. Currently, uh, we are having to pay the highest uh, freight rates due to trade uh, yeah. imbalances. Containers come, they go empty, and so we pay double uh, the freight. Yeah. Our premiums on uh, freight is higher due to the insecurity mm. in our maritime space. Thankfully, that has gone down, but they are yet to take off the high level risk. And the new fuels, mm. when introduced, would also increase the impact on how we do business. And so it is essential mm. that the African countries go to table and present uh, their front and mm. make sure that uh, the fund that will come there off of the market-based measures mm. are allocated to bring us up to speed uh, in line with our developing, uh, our developed counterparts. Mm. How soon are we expecting African countries to go to the table to make a case? for themselves. <laughs> okay, so there is a meeting in March. The mm. Intersessional Working Group on the Greenhouse, yes, next month. greenhouse Gas Emissions okay. is coming off uh, in March. Mm. It is essential that African countries go and take active participation in those discussions. Mm. Following from that, the Marine Environmental Protection Committee, MEPC, mm. their ATF session in July, right. which is expected to adopt mm. the review strategy, mm. will come off in July. And mm. it is also uh, advised mm. that Africans go out in their numbers and then also make speak. Their voice heard. Yes, make their voices heard. Mm. That is what we can, we can do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be coming back to you, and uh, when I come back to you, I want to find out from you what the posturing of African, African governments is uh, in terms of, you know, going green, and whether they are buying into it, whether they are willing to, I mean, I know some countries may be very proactive in terms of this particular agenda, others may be a bit laid back or laxed. I want to take your take on that when I come back. But let me go to uh, Jacob and find out from you. Uh, Jake, if you can tell us the, some of the key elements, uh, you know, uh, between Ghana, Danish, uh, you know, relationships and what you have done so far in terms of collaborations. Well, the Danish ambassador said in, in the interview uh, a few minutes ago that the maritime cooperation dates many years back, uh, almost 10 years. Mm. But I will focus on the green elements. Right, yes. So the new thing is, is that we focus on, on green shipping as well. 
So I think the, the conference on green shipping in Africa is a good example. We have had a, an excellent partnership to prepare that conference. Uh, we have also had a very good collaboration in ensuring that Ghana is a member of the zero emission shipping mission. And we are currently looking into which projects can Ghana contribute to. So we have, we have high expectations for, for Ghana's participation in projects on, on seafarers, uh, etc. So we believe Ghana can bring uh, a lot of knowledge in, into this perspective and also the, the African view. Thirdly, we have uh, informal dialogue on the IMO negotiations. Uh, we can discuss uh, the submissions that are made. Uh, we can share notes uh, and also have just an informal dialogue on, on how to proceed in the negotiations. And lastly, uh, we share best practices, uh, both in terms of energy efficiency, what can be done, uh, what have we learned so far, and other initiatives that can accelerate, accelerate the, the national green shipping. Mm. Okay, I know that a lot of capacity building initiatives have been initiated by your government and the Danish Maritime Authority in African countries to bring them up to speed to be able to uh, deal with the issues that arise in terms of wanting to go green and all that. Uh, not only Ghana, but other African countries, if, uh, you, if you agree. I just want to find out from you why that is, that you are fixated in Africa. I think I asked you that in a, in a different style. I just want to find out again from you what Denmark stands to gain by making all these investments on the African continent and, and trying to encourage African countries to go green? Well, uh, we don't gain anything in, in particular uh, economically, but we, our aim is to support the, the voices of Africa, to support the capacity development uh, of the maritime organizations such as Ghana Maritime Authority. Because as Nana rightly said, uh, Africa has to raise its voice. The African countries need to participate actively in the IMO negotiations in order to make sure that we have an outcome which is fair and equitable. So, so that's our main goal, uh, that you should raise your voice in, in Africa, uh, have, have your voices heard, uh, and then live up to the IMO regulations, because we know it can be difficult uh, yeah, to, to implement regulations. So that's another part, making sure that shipping is safe uh, and, and runs smoothly. So these are the two the uh, main arguments for, for Denmark to, to be present. Would you say you are satisfied so far with the outcomes of these investments that you are making uh, in terms of capacity building and then all the other things that you're doing to, to ensure that we also go green? Are you satisfied with the outcomes? Yes, uh, very much. I think we have a very fruitful collaboration and we've seen progress, for example, in the training of tugboat, uh, tugboat uh, cap captains, uh, but also in, in terms of, uh, yeah, of other areas. So yeah, we are very happy. There are a lot of dedicated uh, colleagues in the Ghana Maritime Authorities, and we have a very good collaboration. Oh, absolutely. All right. So still stay with us. We'll come back to you. Um, but let me come to you, Nana. I told you when I come back to you, I'll be finding out from you uh, what the posturing of governments are, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, going green in Africa. Like I said, some governments might be proactive. They would want to push it. Others would be a bit laid back or lax, you know, and need that kind of, you know, push in order to also come along. Okay, so from um, experience, it's uh, the African countries mostly uh, are, are cooperative. If you mm. look at the Paris uh, Agreement, uh, about 50 out of the 54 African countries mm. have committed uh, themselves uh, towards uh, green economies. Mm. That, is, that is a first step. We need to go further, and that is where uh, there is... Uh, some some assistance uh, that is needed, but generally African countries have committed themselves to uh, the green uh, initiative. Mm. Okay, I, I know that uh, um, Jacob in his earlier submission made mention of the fact that one of the things that they're doing is to, you know, ensure that, uh, you know, vessels that are designed are uh, eco uh, green friendly, you know, to go uh, green and all that. Africa, we don't have those resources, like I said earlier on. I just want to find out from you, we don't have our own vessels. I mean, we now hear people are trying to, you know, revive the Black Star Line, do all those things. These are private people and all that. It's not even government. I want to find out from you what role we are supposed to play as Africa and as African countries, you know, in terms of going green. Even though we don't own the ships, uh, we basically rely on foreign vessels. Uh, okay, vessels that fly our flags, yes, we might decide to say, okay, yeah, I mean, they're ours. But technically, we all know in reality that they are not. 
I just want to find out from what role African governments are supposed to play, maritime industry sector players are supposed to play to ensure that uh, we, we make the most of this particular agenda of going green in shipping. Okay, so for African countries, the best uh, that we can do is to ensure that our posted control systems uh, are up to speed, uh, that we ensure that we give them the necessary uh, directives so that they are able to check uh, the vessels that are coming in. Mm. Once uh, the regulations have been passed, if uh, you recall in 2020, the sulfur cap came into force. And so now sulfur oxides uh, have uh, a 0.05% uh, emission rate and it's up to African countries or policy controls mm. to ensure that vessels that are coming uh, into their waters mm. meet uh, these standards. There again, uh, with, the, with all this talk of green shipping, African countries and maritime administrations in particular should have a policy mm. going forward as to the kind of vessels, the type of vessels that uh, are coming uh, onto their flags. They mm. should begin to uh, think about uh, designing or giving mm. what energy efficiency design indexes for new vessels that would want to come onto uh, their flag. And those are some of the initiatives that uh, maritime administrations in the region uh, can take. Mm. And so from what you're saying, it means that we have the right, we reserve the right to reject vessels uh, that do not want to go green. If, if we, they come to register on our flag, we have the right to reject it if, if they don't want to go green. Yes, that is, yes, for a flag state and any mm. vessel that is that wants to go on your flag, the mm. vessel has to meet your requirements. And mm. so if it's a requirement under our flag registry that you should meet a standard, you need to meet it before you can get on our flag. So would you say that pivot the pivot around which this whole thing would revolve largely in Africa would be to utilize the post-state control? The to be able to regulate this and to ensure that we actually go green. Yes, positive control for vessels that are just visiting your ports and going away, mm. and then the flag states for vessels on your on your on your fleet on your national mm. fleet. So it's uh, both ways. Mm. Is there any special role that the, the maritime authorities in Africa can play? For instance, in Ghana, we have the Ghana Maritime Authority. What role can we play to help push this agenda? Uh, to help in pushing this uh, agenda, uh, the Maritime Authority uh, that uh, what, uh, attends IMO meetings yeah. uh, on behalf of Ghana mm. should have uh, an agenda to influence, mm. to influence the decisions related to uh, the, global, the global regulations. That is what we, we, we can do for now. Mm. Okay. Let me come to uh, Jacob. Jake, if you can hear me, uh, your country owns uh, one of the sh sh major shipping lines uh, in the world, and that's MESC. And uh, MESC has actually invested in eco-friendly uh, you know, vessels over the years. I just want to find out from you how important this is uh, to the global you know, uh, chain in terms of green shipping. This is very important. Uh, MESC is setting new standards and is acting like a, like a first mover. So hopefully they can inspire other shipping companies uh, to, to adopt similar ambitious goals. Just to mention that Maersk has recently made a new goal to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions already in 2040, which is 10 years earlier than, than previously announced. Mm. They have a target in 2030 uh, to, uh, to include 50% reduction in emissions per transport container uh, in Maersk Ocean Fleet and also a 70% reduction in absolute emissions from fully controlled terminals. So this is important by setting new standards and by acting as a first mover. Hopefully, uh, they can Im influence other companies. Also, the fact that they have already ordered 19 vessels capable of running on e-methanol, uh, that's a bold, uh, bold message, because this order will actually spur the production of uh, zero emission fuels because if there's no uh, a demand, if, if container companies don't buy these new vessels, why start producing the new fuels? So, so we need to get started, and Maersk has shown the way. Mm. Would you say that uh, Maersk is going this way as a result of the influence that you have brought to bear on it? 
as Den Denmark or Danish Maritime Authority? Well, I think uh, we are a very ambitious government uh, in Denmark. Obviously, we push Musk, but they also have uh, yeah, their own green agenda. They can see that it's actually a good business itself. And if they move first, they can also influence the, the development. So I think it, it's both ways. Uh, they do see it's a good business case, uh, but also they are morally obliged to, uh, yeah, to, to take action because they do emit a lot of greenhouse gas emissions and they are aware that they are part of the problem, but they are also part of the solution. Okay, Jake, if Africa can come on an even keel with the developed countries like you who are already doing so much in terms of green shipping, what do you think are some of the steps that we need to take as a continent to be able to match up? Well, uh, first of all, we, you need uh, good framework conditions for, for private investments in, in port infrastructure. You need very efficient ports. Uh, you need infrastructure capable of uh, yeah, providing uh, new alternative fuels. Uh, and, and it takes a long time to be ready to handle these new fuels. So you need bunkering infrastructure. Yeah, you need onshore power supply uh, to be ready to, yeah, to be part of, become part of new green corridors, uh, etc. So that's very important. Framework conditions for, for private investments, that's, that's essential. But secondly, as Nana rightly said, uh, both government, but also Afri government in Ghana, but also other governments in Africa, need to start influencing the uh, discussions on global regulation at IMO. Because only if you make your voice heard, you can get influence. So that's important uh, that many African countries become more active in the negotiations in IMO. Mm, mm, mm. All right. I'll still stay with us. I'll be coming back to you. And when I come back to you, I just want to find out from you what, the Dem uh, what Denmark uh, expects from governments, port authorities, and maritime authorities within Africa, you know, in terms of this new whole arrangement of going green. But let me come to Nana in the studio and find out from you. I want to ask you the same question. What role um, the maritime authority expects, uh, you know, terminals, you know, uh, port operators and port authorities uh, to play in all this arrangement? Okay, so in... Uh Pushing the green agenda, the ports play a critical, a critical role. Um, if uh, let me see if I can cite an example. If driving on the beach road, you see a number of vessels uh, lined up in our in our waters, waiting to berth uh, in our ports. So port authorities should be able to design a way in which. Uh, it is operated on a just-in-time basis mm. so that vessels do not come, stay at anchorage, uh, burn fuel. It mm. all contributes to uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. Mm. Uh, the port should also take initiatives to have uh, onshore, onshore power supplies. Mm. Immediately the vessel berth, there should be uh, an onshore interface which would also reduce uh, the levels of uh, emissions. And then we can also look at uh, automation. Automation and digitalization is one of the ways that we can uh, improve on right. the green agenda. Mm. And so these are areas that uh, port authorities should uh, invest in, should look into, and then make the necessary arrangements. And then finally, bunkering. Bunkering mm. in, the, in the region. The port uh, authorities should look at uh, uh, introducing these new alternative fuels to bunker the vessels that would want to, that would require bunkering mm. from uh, our region. And that is what uh, can be done. On the part of the Maritime Authority, mm. we need to create a, a regulatory environment yeah. for these things uh, to thrive by issuing the necessary operational guidelines and the maritime circulars to aid uh, investors and then the port authorities. That is a only way we can move forward in this uh, regard. Mm. I hear Jacob mention the issue of efficient ports, uh, infrastructure, bunkering infrastructure, as well as stable power supply and all that to go. That means that you are really in sync uh, with what he's, yes. he's proposing. Yes. Okay. Um, this is Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television, and tonight we are discussing uh, green shipping, and we're taking it from the African perspective and how Africa can match up with the global uh, giants in terms of going green uh, in shipping. With me in the studios is Nana uh, Buampong, he's Director of Maritime Services, Ghana Maritime Authority. Also joining us via Zoom is Jacob 
uh, Hogarth, his director of climate and green transition, Danish Maritime Authority. Uh, the two gentlemen we're doing the discussion with tonight. We're going for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the show. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goil Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Sellful. It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the project and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, you're welcome back. This is Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. Indeed, tonight we're discussing green shipping, the African perspective. With us in the studios, Nana Buampong, Nana Bwati Buampong, Director of Maritime Services, Ghana Maritime Authority, also in the studios. Uh, also joining us via Zoom, as Jacob Hogard, who is the director in charge of uh, climate and green transition at the Danish Maritime Authority. Uh, gentlemen, you're welcome back. Let me go to um, Jake, uh, Jake on uh, Zoom and find out from you. I, asked, I said I'll come back and find out from you what are your expectations or the expectations of the Danish, Danish government is uh, of African governments, of maritime authorities, and indeed of um, you know, uh, port authorities in terms of going green. Hello, well, Jake. I think uh, yeah. that the con yes, I'm here. Yes, I can hear you. Please uh, go ahead. I think yeah. the the conference we had last week on green shipping in Africa clearly showed that there's a huge interest 
in uh, in accelerating uh, the the process. Um, there were many good questions, many good ideas uh, how to move forward, uh, but also showing examples, for example, in South Africa, in Namibia, uh, how to pave the way for the production of future fuels, future zero emission fuels. That really inspired other countries uh, to, to do the same. So I believe uh, we're moving in the right direction, uh, but we need to start with the low-hanging fruits. So energy efficiency measures uh, and, and retrofitting uh, vessels, that's a good way to, st way to start. Uh, also, we have shown that by investing a little bit, you can easily save 8 to 10% uh, of the energy used, both uh, at ports but also uh, on the vessels. So again, that's a good way to start on retrofitting ships and also to look at energy efficiency measures. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you very much. But still stay with us. Let me come to the studio. But before I come to Nana uh, Boacha, let me uh, announce that the phone lines have been activated. My producers have given me the green light to act activate the phone lines. And so the number to dial is 020-552-8353. 020-552-8353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. Nana, I just want to find out from you, in this whole arrangement, does the private sector have a role to play? Yes, definitely. The private sector uh, is the engine of growth. As government, we would uh, yeah. create the enabling environment, mm -hmm. and it's for the private sector to get involved with the investments uh, in this in this area. It's a new it's a new uh, field, and so uh, we would encourage uh, the private persons in Ghana to have a look into the opportunities that uh, abound in mm -hmm. this. In this, in this space, we should uh, have it at the back of our minds that this is where <laughs> the world is heading. And so the uh, early birds, the early birds will make the most uh, out of it. And so it's a call for uh, uh, private uh, persons to uh, have a good look at the investments in that area. Mm. Mm. All right. So let me find out from you. It's been a few years since the silver cup, uh, the, the sulfur cup was implemented. I just want to find from you uh, whether there have been any achievements, any successes chalked. Okay. So for the silver, um, the sulfur cup, mm. uh, according to the IMO, uh, since its, its introduction in January 2020, uh, there's been a reduction of about 77 percent in the emission of uh, sulfur oxides into mm. uh, the atmosphere. 77% mm. is a, a good number, and so it's, it's been a, a huge uh, success, uh, success uh, in that regard. So uh, there have been new, uh, new, new instruments have been uh, introduced. The EEDI, Energy Efficiency Design Index, mm. and then the Carbon uh, Intensity Index have all been introduced with the aim of uh, improving emissions from um, the industry. Mm. Mm. Okay, Jake, let me come to you and find out from you what your uh, assessment of uh, the level of cooperation from African, uh, you know, uh, stakeholders has been uh, as far as the green agenda is concerned. Well, I think we have had a, a, a good contribution, a good dialogue uh, already. So uh, I think African countries can uh, participate in international partnerships and also in pilot projects we can share best practices uh, and we can in introduce again pilot projects that can be implica replicated uh, elsewhere. So, so that's one idea we can do. Uh, but secondly, I think we need to address some of the concerns uh, that many of the countries in Africa had, had mm -hmm. expressed uh, at the conference. We need to bring those voices to the IMO and find solutions that are both ambitious, have an impact in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and are fair. So these are, uh, are my views, and I believe we can support uh, Ghana in, in, in these areas. Mm. All right, so we just mentioned greenhouse gas emissions, and there's a message here that has come through. Uh, it says, my name is Fred. Um, I found out that in the Netherlands, there are detectors within the port corridor that detects the carbon dioxide emissions of incoming vessels. Is that the case in Denmark too? Not to my knowledge. Uh, it, it could come uh, later, but we have not... Uh, approved the uh, uh, or endorsed the global regulation on, on this area yet so it could come in the future mm. okay all right uh, this one says in the view of the danish maritime authority which of the newer uh, energy for vessels best suits the green objection uh, lng hydrogen or methanol jake uh, 
Well, LNG is, is definitely not the uh, future fuel. It's it can at the best a transitional fuel. Uh, we believe uh, e-methanol is a good uh, uh, place to start, but in the future, ammonia would probably be uh, be uh, a good option. But before we start uh, producing a lot of e-ammonia, we need to have safety measures in place because we know that uh, ammonia is really poisonous. It's mm. corrosive. Uh, so that has to be in place before we can start producing uh, ammonia at scale. Mm. All right. Great. Uh, so let's stay with us. We would we'll, we'll come back to you. Um, Nana, would yeah. you want to add your voice to this issue of, uh, you know, detectors within the port corridor to detect carbon dioxide emissions of vessels coming in? Okay. Is this something we can do on our continent or in Ghana? Okay. So um, actually in Ghana, there is... Uh, we will be doing a pilot, mm. a pilot uh, sometime this year, and okay. it's in connection with um, uh, what a maritime sector cooperation we have mm. with uh, Denmark. Okay. And so some uh, detectors would be installed mm. at our ports, and it will pick samples of emissions from ships, and mm. then it would advise what is being used uh, on the vessels to assist our port state control mm. officers. So in that regard, for Ghana, there is something already in the pipeline. Uh, in the pipeline. And I, they, I think they will be installed uh, by the close of uh, this year mm. or the first quarter of next year. I need to. That was going check. to be my, my next question. How soon that is going to happen? Yes, I, I need to check uh, the deadlines. But mm. there is something as part of our phase uh, three. Mm. on the strategic sector cooperation with uh, Denmark, mm. which started this year. There is something uh, of that sort in it. You might want to have a bite at the second question, too, which talks about which fuel, uh, which newer in, of the newer energies for you know, vessels best suits our situation in Africa. Do you, do you, would you want to prefer any solutions, any, any comments? So um, in Africa, currently, uh, we have the hydrogen uh, mm. alliance, which mm. is being... Uh, tested by South Africa, uh, Namibia, and other countries. But mm. then we are also aware of uh, some tests on ammonia. Mm. The fear with ammonia is uh, safety, the safety issues. Mm. And so everybody is waiting on uh, how best to tackle the safety issues before we go into the production of uh, ammonia. Mm. And so that is where we stand. Okay. This one says, my name is Dr. Bray. Uh, okay, that was that's where it was that's where they asked about the, the type of fuel. Well, my name is Asiri. I learned that there is uh, a, a Tema LNG company now. Uh, how can the global shipping industry benefit from this? And how aware are authorities within Ghana shipping Ghana shipping sector of this and helping to put this facility out there? Uh, this one is from Manuel. Okay, so I think that there is indeed a Tema LNG plan, but I mm. think is uh, an FSRU. It is. It is F an FSR, you say floating storage uh, 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 okay. unit. It okay. is not, yes. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, uh, my next question to you, Nana, was going to be um, uh, considering that countries like uh, Ghana are now tapping into the uh, fortunes of uh, the fossil fuels and all that. It's not at a time we are beginning to also warm ourselves into it and all that. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, uh, green shipping, we must join, you know. Uh, the agenda and all that. Isn't this going to kind of like be a setback to us as a continent? In my, in my view, uh, it shouldn't. It would only add to the cocktail of uh, energy uh, mixes. So mm. we, it's, I think it's rather uh, a good, uh, a good uh, warning so that if we start looking at other avenues of making revenue for the state. Because invariably, <laughs> with the turn of events and mm. the discussions, yes. we are going to go green. And mm. so to have the warning uh, this early is a good enough omen. The transition is not going to happen uh, in the overnight. Yeah. overnight. Mm. Uh, in the levels of the current IMO levels, it's 50% by 2050 and mm. net zero at the turn of the century. Mm. And so we have enough time to mm. look at all the other uh, energy sources. And I think we have, we've been blessed with a number of uh, energy, renewable energy, energy sources. sources. We, have, uh, we have the waters, the sea, the inland waters. We have abundant solar. 
and so we should it should rather spare the discussion mm. on uh, how to have a cocktail of uh, energy supply so that we are not overly dependent and then end up in the uh, the, the oil case that, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. has yeah. beleaguered a lot of our uh, sister countries right Okay. Uh, Jacob, if you can hear me, I just want to find out from you how Denmark and some of your partners can help alleviate some of the concerns uh, raised by Africa uh, when it comes to the issue of green shipping. It, well, I think it's the most important thing is to listen to the concerns, understand the situation of countries such as uh, Ghana, to, to know how would the new measures impact the countries in, in, in Africa. And then secondly, to come up with joint solutions, joint ideas uh, that are both efficient in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but also are fair and equitable. So here again, we need dialogue. We need to understand which kind of measures can be uh, agreed on uh, at IMO uh, that are both efficient, fair and equitable. Mm. I, I just put a question to um, Nana Wache here. Uh, that Africa is beginning to explore its fossil, uh, you know, it, its its natural resources, and one of them is is the fossil fuel thing uh, that that we are enjoying. Uh, we have an abundance, and that's actually one of the backbones of of uh, the economy, if you like, because it brings in a lot of revenue for the country. Uh, now, uh, Denmark, together with the world, is telling Africa to go green. And so, what becomes of the countries like Ghana? Who are beginning to reap the benefits of, of this, uh, uh, in, you know, newfound wealth? Well, I think the future is green, mm. uh, and all countries, to the best of their ability, should start investing in the uh, production of renewable energy. Mm. Could be from solar, from wind, from hydro, as also mentioned uh, by Nana. We have seen in Denmark that the renewable energy sources actually cheaper on, in the long run than the fossil fuels. So again, by making some strategic investments, by making good framework conditions to invest in renewable energy, it actually pays off. So again, the future is green, uh, and in order to benefit from the economic uh, possibilities, you need to start investing now. You cannot wait uh, 10 or 15 years, that's for sure. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, there's a message here. It says, uh, to be honest, being in the industry, I think it is expensive for, um, I think it's expensive for ports to take investors based on their compliance levels, especially if competitors are not doing the same. Uh, like if Ghana becomes too light on measures and neighboring ports aren't, uh, we may lose traffic. Uh, what does the GMA think? Uh, this one is from Nana in Tema. The question again, I didn't. Uh, it says, to be honest, being in the industry, I think it is expensive for ports to take in vessels based on their compliance levels, especially if competitors are not doing the same. Uh, like if Ghana becomes too, light, too tight on measures and neighboring ports are not, uh, we may lose traffic. What does the Ghana Maritime Authority think? Uh, in the view of the Ghana Maritime Authority, shipping is conducted on a level playing uh, field. And so once uh, the regulations have been adopted, they are... They are implemented uh, on the same on the same level, and so uh, I find it difficult for uh, other neighboring countries to go lower mm. on some of these things. There, there is a no more favorable treatment clause mm. in most of these uh, instruments, and mm. so it will be difficult for anyone to go below the the, the bottom line. Mm. Mm. Okay, because it cuts across. It so cuts nobody, across, You yes. cannot be in your country and say you are not going to be. No. Okay. All right, that's in terms of compliance. All right, so um, let me come to you and uh, find out from you, Jacob, uh, what you think our potential is in terms of uh, renewable energy sources uh, or resources uh, in Africa and how we can harness this uh, to, to support our uh, green shipping agenda. I think recent studies from the African Green Hydrogen Alliance has pointed to a big potential for economic growth and job creation. If, again, if countries improve their framework conditions, start investing in renewable energy and investments in production facilities of alternative fuels and bunkering infrastructure. So there's a big potential, uh, but you need to get started and the framework conditions uh, in place. But obviously not all countries will be able to produce alternative fuels 
uh, because some countries are better blessed with the with hydro potentials, with the solar potential, uh, etc. So it's also important to be ready to provide these fuels uh, as part of a, being a bunkering hub for the future green corridors. So there's a role for most countries, either as fuel producers or as bunkering hubs, or having simply very efficient and green ports. So again, there are possibilities for, for most countries, I would say, in Africa. Okay, so there are those who think that, yeah, we can, we can do by 50% 2030. There are those who, there also think that we can go 100% by 2050 and all that. Can you bring us up to speed what you think as the Danish Maritime Authority in Denmark? Denmark's position is that we should aim for, for zero emission uh, by 2050. Because the fact is that the current strategy from IMO from 2018 is not aligned with the Paris goals. So we need to improve the level of ambition. We need to agree on efficient uh, regulation that can bring down the emissions from shipping. If we don't do anything else than the current regulation, which is envisaged, the emissions from shipping will continue to rise. And that is simply not an option. We have to take bold decisions. We have to to, to start acting uh, and be more ambitious. And then we need to find solutions that are equitable and fair and make sure that we leave no country behind. But it, it's not really a, a choice to, to do nothing. We need to make sure that shipping is aligned with the Paris Agreement. Mm. Now, gauging our current status and where we are at the moment, are you convinced that, yes, we can meet these timelines? Yes, uh, I am convinced we can do a lot, but uh, first of all, we need an ambitious strategy, and secondly, we need ambitious regulation. Uh, and as Nana rightly said, there are several uh, measures being discussed and negotiated currently, also market-based measures that can generate uh, revenues. Uh, and this uh, it could be a carbon tax, it could be other economic measures that would uh, limit the uh, the price difference between the fossil fuels and the future alternative fuels. So these are there are options on the table, but they have to be negotiated, and we need to yeah, to find common ground on, on this area. Okay, I I also want to find out from you what next after the you know uh, Africa International uh, Green Shipping Conference, uh, which was held here in Accra. What next? What's next on the radar? It, well, it, uh, from our end, uh, we also have a a more technical uh, conference in Copenhagen in the beginning of March, where we are going to discuss informally with other IMO member states how to find a compromise uh, later on in July. Uh, we are also going to have uh, yeah, other meetings, both bilateral meetings, multilateral meetings, uh, yeah, and then again come up with new ideas, new solutions uh, in the IMO. So that's one track. But a second track is to continue all the public-private partnerships, our demonstration projects that can show that we can actually manage to promote uh, zero emission shipping. Because we need to show that it's possible, otherwise uh, investors will not start uh, investing in, in both new uh, vessel designs and alternative fuels. So we have two tracks, regulation, glo global regulation and innovation through public-private partnerships. Mm. All right, we would want to let you go at the moment, but we just want to find out from you whether you have any last words for our viewers who are watching us right now across the world. Just to say that I believe you've done a lot of good things and the interest showed uh, at the conference really is, is promising. So keep on uh, the good work, be more active uh, at the global discussions in IMO, and continue investing in uh, energy efficient solutions uh, and more efficient ports. Thank you very much indeed, Jacob Hoggard, who is Director of Climate and Green Transition, Danish Maritime Authority, uh, for joining us here on our Port here on Metropolitan Television right here in Ghana. We are deeply grateful to you. Thank you very much indeed and have a super week ahead. You're welcome. Have a great. Thank you very much. So let me come to the studio and uh, Nana. Uh, if you permit me, we'll just go for a two-minute international news break, and then when we come back, you wrap up with us. Sure. Thank you, sir. So we'll go for the international news, and when we come back, we'll continue the show. Please stay with us. Danish container shipping Major Mask is donating around 1,000 shipping containers to Turkey to help those in need affected by the massive earthquake that hit Syria and Turkey on February 6th. 
The company said that the move follows close contact with the State Disaster and Emergency Management Authority of Turkey. Mesk noted that containers are already being converted into container houses and that the company plans to be donating more in the coming weeks. South Korean shipbuilder Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, DSME, has secured a contract to build one liquefied natural gas carrier, which represents the shipbuilder's first order in 2023. Under the contract worth 314.5 billion won, which is equivalent to $248 million, DSME will build the LNG carrier for an undisclosed ship owner in Oceania. According to an exchange filing, the vessel is scheduled for delivery by the end of March 2027. Further information about the carrier's capacity and specifications was not revealed. Last year, DSME exceeded its order targets by 16%, winning $10.4 billion worth of orders. DSME and its compatriot shipbuilders secured the largest market share for high-value-added eco-friendly vessel orders in 2022, bagging 58% of the total ordering tally for the year. All right, so you're welcome back. Uh, you're welcome back. Those were happenings in the port and shipping industry on the international stage. And this is Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. We're just about wrapping up, and we still have Nana Wachi uh, Wampong in the studios, who's Director of Maritime Services at the Ghana Maritime Authority. I, I put the same question to, um, you know, uh, 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 Jacob, uh, find, trying to find out from him whether he thinks that we're going to meet the, the timelines for the 2030, 50% uh, you know, gas emissions and 2050, 100%. Do you think that uh, from the perspective of the Ghana Maritime Authority, these are timelines we can meet? He's quite convinced and he's optimistic that yes, we can do that. But from the African perspective? Uh, from, the, from the African perspective, mm. we tend to go with the current uh, strategies that have been uh, enumerated in the IMO's uh, initial uh, GAG strategy, and mm. that is what we are working towards to mm. do. When you say GAG strategy, what does that mean? That is the IMO's initial greenhouse gas, greenhouse uh, gas, gas, gas strategy. That okay. is what is being reviewed mm -hmm. uh, currently. Okay. And so uh, we think it's ambitious uh, enough, and then we will work. We will work towards achieving. Uh, those those aims, mm. and uh, he also mentioned some uh, you know other energy reno renewable energy sources that we can tap into uh, to better our lot as Africa. Um, do you agree? Um, what are some of the th uh, other energy resources that you think that we can tap into? Yes, for Africa we have uh, abundant solar, and so mm. those solar and then hydro those mm. are areas that we need to uh, look look into uh, critically. And mm. so, uh, as a country. The Ministry of Transport and the Ministries of uh, Energy would begin discussions on mm. how to uh, move ahead when it comes to uh, the green transition for shipping. How mm. do we create the enabling environment for ports? How do we? Uh, what policies do we put in place to make Ghana a bankering, a bankering hub or a fuel supply nation when it comes to uh, the renewable energies? And so those are discussions that. Uh, will be held in the next couple of months and Absolutely. we will take a decision as a country. I just wanted to also find out what some of the major events on the calendar of the Ghana Maritime Authority is for the year, uh, if you have them all off the top of your head and then we just wrap up. We have barely one minute. To go. Regarding uh, the, the green transition? Not green transition, any, any some okay, of the so, major events on your calendar. Okay, so uh, with the Ghana Maritime Authority, what uh, I can, what what comes readily to mind right. is the passage of the cabotage no. uh, regulations. Okay. We have issued we have issued uh, a maritime uh, circular indicating mm. that the implementation commences mm. uh, on the first of April. And first so April. Okay. yes, and so players in the industry should uh, be uh, conversant with that. Okay, cabotage regulations. Cabotage yes. regulations. Okay. Yes. We'll come for details later. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Nana Buache uh, Wampong, who is Director of Maritime Services at the Ghana Maritime Authority, joined us in studio uh, for the discussion on green uh, shipping. Uh, that's the African perspective. We're deeply grateful to you, sir, for joining us this evening. And we know as and when we require your services, you will always oblige us. We're deeply grateful, sir. Thank you very much for obliging us. And so, viewers, this is how we draw the curtain on uh, this week's edition of Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Uh, maximum thanks to our sponsors, uh, Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and indeed Meridian Port Services. That's Guel PLC. Guel PLC is not Guel Company Limited. 
I will say thanks to our executive producers, Madam Mr. Gividonko and Nana AC uh, Soderberg. My name is Kennedy Mona. God willing, we shall bounce back next week with another wonderful edition of the show. Have a super week ahead and thank you very much for watching.